This video was brought to you in part by SD Bullion. While some online bullion dealers continue to charge $4 over spot for U.S. Mint Silver Eagles, SD Bullion is selling 2016 Silver Eagles for just $2.29 over spot for any quantity. Again, that's just $2.29 over spot for any quantity. If you haven't joined over 25,000 new customers by making the switch to SD Bullion, what are you waiting for? You could save hundreds or even thousands of dollars on your next order. SD Bullion, the lowest prices, period. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceAndLiberty.com and with us today, a new guest, Steve St. Angelo from the SRS Rocco Report. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Elijah, there's a lot of things happening in the markets recently. I think we're going to see some uh, volatile uh, things happening and uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you. Definitely, and I'd like to start out with something you wrote to me. You said that I believe we are going to experience what is known as the Seneca Cliff. Thus, energy production, economic activity, and GDP will all collapse together." End quote. Now, I guess, did you want to discuss a little bit about this first? Yeah, and I think this is important because my now, I, I like the precious metals. I think they are a store of wealth, even though right now the majority of wealth, supposed wealth, is in paper assets. Uh, they aren't, that's not wealth. That's claims on future economic activity. So you have to have growing future economic activity to pay back everything. And I don't think we're going to have, we're not going to have that. Uh, it's not that I don't think we're not going to have that. So what is a real store of wealth is bought and paid for gold and silver. So the thing is, the Seneca Cliff comes from uh, an ancient Roman philosopher. His name was Lucius Seneca. And he he had, uh, had a lot of different famous sayings, but one of them was, increases are of sluggish growth, but the way to ruin is rapid. And basically, if we chart that, if we put that on a chart, it's like you see growth starting slow, uh, and then it moves up about 45 degrees, and then it gets to the top, and it doesn't come down 45 degrees. Like, let's say a bell curve. It comes down very quickly. It's like a cliff. And so this is from my research on energy, on the, what is known as the energy returned on invested, we are going to experience a, a collapse. And this is above and beyond, people talk about EMP attacks, nuclear attacks, or the collapse of the dollar, or a breakdown of the banking system. If, if we don't have any of those, we're still going to have this Seneca-like collapse because of the energy. And so, We've been living off of cheap energy up until recently. And what that is, and that, let me just quickly explain, it's the energy return on invested. Some people do not believe in the peak oil theory, and they believe, well, now that we've, we've brought on the shale oil, and it's, we've almost doubled U.S. oil production in the last 10 years, which is phenomenal. But it, it's, it was oil we really couldn't afford without zero interest rates and QE printing, money, money printing. So... The oil that we were producing in the early 1900s up until the 70s and 80s was very high energy return on invested. What that means is for every barrel of energy cost to produce oil, in 1970, we were getting 30 barrels. Those, we had, thus, we had 29 profitable barrels of oil in 1970, the U.S. economy did. And you could use those to build infrastructure, uh, roads, highways, uh, for entertainment, for health care, for uh, school, for travel, for agriculture. Every barrel was used in, in that profitable barrel was used to maintain, grow, and have a uh, growing economy. Well, shale oil today has an energy return on invested of five to one. So even though we're producing a lot of it, it's a sixth of what we were doing in the 1970s. So now we only have four profitable barrels. The problem is you can't run the same system with all this infrastructure we have to maintain and all these obligations, social security. So how do you continue running it? You, you add debt. 
And all this debt now, Elijah, we have in the system is, is, is devouring us. It, there's too much debt. So if you don't have the, the high energy return on invested, the high quality oil, if you don't have that to run the system, you put debt into the system. And so this is the issue that uh, I think most analysts missed, even the precious metal analysts, because I don't think we're going to see, as Jim Sinclair or Jim Rickards, we're going to back the dollar or the gold by all the dollars out there, by all the uh, treasury debt out there. It, it, it won't matter. Gold and silver prices will explode because of this falling energy situation. And so I wanted to start the interview on that. Definitely. And I'd like to get back to uh, precious metals a little later. But first, I'd like to discuss more about energy. You've talked about how the whole financial system is basically in dire shape because of all this subpriming that's going on kind of like what was happening in 2008. But in this case, it's not just the housing industry, it's the auto industry, it's bonds, and it's also energy. So did you want to talk about this? Yeah, correct. In, in 2007, we had the housing bubble, and that was the mortgage, uh, subprime mortgage. And everything was, was uh, built upon that. We had auto sales, and we had people making more, uh, let's say, furniture. And so th people were going out to dinner and we were using also the, our houses as, um, as ATMs. So that was one, one of the subprime. That was it. It was the housing. Well, now we have four or five, if you want to include the uh, student debt. We have auto. You can, you can now lease or b buy a car for nothing or little down for 84 months. I mean, when I was younger, it was two, three or four years. 48 months. And if you, if you had to do five years, 60 months, you were considered a loser. So now it's, it's almost normal to have an 84 month car loan. And, and if we look at the, the government bonds, the government bonds have doubled at our negative rates. They, they're 13 trillion now out there out that are negative rates. And that's doubled since the last six months. Well, these are basically, these are junk bonds, really, if you think about it, because most of the governments are, de are in debt. So it's almost like these 13 trillion negative rate bonds out there are junk bonds. But the, so this is the third leg of the subprime U.S. market. The fourth one is what I believe, Elijah, is the most important is the subprime energy industry. We peaked in cheap oil production. The United States did. Let's just forget everybody else. But they are, have, they are peaking in cheap oil production. We peaked in 1970, and it to continued to decline to 2005. Well, then, with zero interest rates and money printing, uh, the price of oil shot up to $100. And we, uh, companies could finance debt with zero interest rates or very low interest rates. So we brought on shale. Now, shale, I call, is subprime energy because I've got a chart here. And there's, set, there's seven of some of the top shale oil companies, and it includes Continental Resources, Concho, EOG, Noble, Occidental, Hess, and Chevron. Now, Chevron isn't a big a shale oil producer, but it does produce some shale. But I wanted to include it because the debt of these seven companies was only $17, tri uh, 17 billion in 2006. Last year, it ballooned to $72 billion. What was interesting the biggest increase came after 2011. And Elijah, these companies were getting 100, almost $100 for 2011, for 2012, and 2013, and the majority of 2014. But their debt continued to increase. And from what I, from what I found, the shale oil companies with those high oil prices weren't really making any money. So what happened was their, their balance sheets just ballooned with debt. And the total U.S. sector, energy sector now, has $370 billion in debt. And I've said this in, in a few interviews and articles. Last year, 48% of their operating income just to pay the interest on their debt. And that will be worse this year. It may be 65 70%. The U.S. energy industry is in severe trouble. I don't see oil prices rising. There's too much glut now. The, old, the economies of the world are continuing to, to contract. So consumption will fall quicker than production, and prices will fall further. We may see bounces here 
unless we have a black swan in the Middle East. So this is really going to gut the U.S. energy industry. And uh, without energy, especially without U.S. energy, you have to import more energy now, more oil to make up what – and production, I didn't inc include this, production is already is declining. We peaked last year at 9.6 million barrels. We're down to 8.7, and that's not just because of the price is lower. I've, I have looked at research and forecast that the Eagle Ford and the back end, we're going to peak in 2016, 2017, even at higher oil prices. It's just there's only so many areas and so many wells that they can, uh, they can put in in the area. And once you do all these wells, you start to decline. The, the falling oil price has just moved this up, this production decline, a little bit quicker. So, so now that when you add the, the subprime energy, the entire U.S. economy is, is a subprime economy. And the only thing that's keeping it alive is government and the Federal Reserve intervention. And we're seeing this is becoming harder and harder for them to manipulate, which is why I believe the, the uh, gold and silver prices are finally starting to take off. And now moving to precious metal prices, I guess, did you want to expand a little bit about um, why you see precious metal prices going so much higher in the future? There are several reasons. Uh, many of the precious metal analysts, uh, it's because of the debt. And that, that's perfectly a good reason. There's the debt or the, all the outstanding fiat money. But I'd like to, again, remind your, your listeners that a, grow, a fiat system needs a growing energy supply for to expand the fiat system. All the outstanding currency, all the M3, uh, you know, M1, M2, M3, you need an expanding energy supply. When energy supply starts to peak and decline, you can no longer expand fiat money. And now with all this debt in the system, and this is the reason why we have zero interest rates or all these countries going to zero interest rates. There's just too much debt, Elijah, in the system. We can't have normal interest rates of 5% because our, the interest on our debt would balloon over a trillion dollars a year. So we've got too much debt. We can't continue to service the interest on the debt, and that's because of the energy. So the reason I see the price of gold and silver moving up much higher, and it's happening right now, we, we peaked in cheap oil production several years ago. Now we're waiting to peak in the expensive oil production, which is shale, deep water. And uh, that's why they're not even going to go to Arctic. They need $120 to get to Arctic uh, oil. And I, I would like to say this. There's this economic principle that once demand or oil production falls, and there's, let's say there's less oil production than demand, then the prices will shoot back up to 100, 150. I don't see that ever happening, not like it has in the past. Why? There's too much debt. There's just way too much debt now. The debt has been used to bring on the oil. We can't, we can't add more debt. And it's the old saying back in, let's say, 1990, they put $1 of debt, the U.S. government, and we got $2 of GDP. Now it's like $5 of debt and you get $1 of GDP. So we can't continue this. So I see the price of gold and silver exploding because, A, you don't want to be in paper assets. They're going to implode, and you don't even want to be in real estate. And this is where 99% of the world investors of the $250 trillion in global assets are, are invested in, in bonds, stocks, sovereign wealth funds, and real estate. That's where, the, and, and, but, and only maybe a percent or a half a percent are invested into gold and silver. And so just the funneling of a percent or two out of that 99 and into gold and silver, we could see a double or, or tripling off the bat. So this is how I see the price of the precious metals exploding higher. And I don't think this is going to take five years. I think we're starting to see it right now, and we could, we could see serious fireworks in the next few years. Now, I know you've said that silver will actually outperform gold. Did you want to expand on why you think this? Yeah, and it's not only because that uh, there's, uh, let's say, s silver is a smaller price, so when more people move into the price of silver, it, 
it, it, the leverage really pushes it up. And that's true. More speculators move into silver. It's easier to move a $20 price of silver than it is to move a $1,300 price of gold. But let's, let's just forget that for a moment. I wrote an article about the fundamental reason why silver will explode much higher than gold. And it, it's, it's about the uh, actual supply and demand, too. There's a lot more gold in the world than there's silver. And a lot of silver since the 50s and 60s has gone into industrial applications. And it's not being recycled. I mean, I got a graphic right here. And last year, of the 18,000 tons of gold, uh, silver, industrial demand, only 3,200 were recycled, 18%. And so some of it's being recycled. Some of the computers and electronics are being recycled, but we have to remember there's silver in, in appliances or in, in silver applications that are in homes and trailers and, 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 and cars and things. And these are in, in landfills. And also, this is what's a very interesting thing. Uh, of the, of the 7,000 tons of, of silver jewelry in 2015, only 551 tons were recycled. The gold market had 2,400 tons of gold jewelry demand. Only 1,000 tons were recycled. 40% of gold jewelry was recycled last year compared to only about 8% of gold of silver jewelry. And the reason why is this. People will go down to the pawn shop and take in a couple of rings and get $500 or so. It's worth it. You go down with a couple of silver uh, jewelry pieces, it's, a, it's maybe 20 bucks. It's not worth your time. So there's so much silver jewelry that has been produced. We're talking 200 million ounces last year were produced. And very little bit of it is recycled. And I don't think we're going to see much of that come into the market unless we have triple-digit prices uh, of silver. And the last thing is, this is, I think, the most important thing. 36,000 tons of gold demand last year. Only 4,600 were recycled. Compare this to gold, it was 1,000, we'll say 1,100 tons of gold recycling to 4,200 tons of gold demand. So there was 26% of gold was recycled. Only 13% of silver was recycled. So... There is so much, Elijah, there's so much less silver in the market compared to gold. And when people can't afford gold, they go into silver. But I think the price of silver will increase. We could see an easy 10 to 1 gold-silver ratio just because of what I've talked about with the energy and the collapsing values of most paper assets and real estate. And then when people, when gold becomes way too high for most people, they'll move into silver. And then that will really push the price up to leverage at least 10 to 1. I could see a 10 to 1. That wouldn't be crazy at all. I know some, have talk, some people have talked about silver actually becoming more valuable than gold because if you look back at different bubbles in history, prices can go extremely, extremely high when there's you know a frenzy to buy and everyone thinks it's going to go up forever. And also the fact that, as you mentioned, there's actually more investable gold in the world than silver is it possible in your mind that silver could actually be worth more than gold someday? You know, some people would call that hype talk. And uh, I might agree with that in one way, but this is the issue that I'm trying to uh, relay to your followers and listeners. We have no idea what the value of gold and silver are. Because since the 1970s, we've, we've, the, the world investors, Americans and foreigners, have been investing their funds, surplus funds, into paper assets and real estate. That's what they've been doing. Now, it, it, what if they, a percentage of them, instead of investing in a 401k, took that money and purchased physical gold and silver, not the SLV or the GLD, but physical gold and silver. We would have seen much higher prices already. So now, when that whole system implodes, we have no idea you know, it's kind of like the musical chairs. There's, uh, there's 10 people, but nine chairs. It's going to be 10 people, 100 people in two chairs. So we have no idea what kind of impact this, let's say, uh, uh, this huge revaluation, huge wake-up, I call it precious metal religion, 
we have no idea what that's going to do to the, the, the person. But uh, I do think once institutions start coming in, and they'll be the first ones, they'll, they'll come in, and then it'll be like hedge funds, institutions, wealthy, and then it'll be the population. So it is highly possible because there's so much paper and there's so much real estate, uh, bloated real estate values. You have to remember, I forecast that U.S. oil production is going to decline 30 to 40 percent by 2020. It's down 17. It's down 17 percent already. That shale oil production is down 17 percent. By 2020, I see 30, 40. By 2025, I see 65 to 70 percent or more. How do you run L.A. or New York, Chicago or Dallas on a, a quarter of the energy? Because I don't think we're going to be able to import a lot of oil when our U.S. dollar and our U.S. treasuries become worthless. We're going to have to actually trade something of real value. So this is the issue that I don't think most analysts are looking at. So when all these values, all these supposed assets start to implode, it is quite possible that the little bit of silver and gold out there, we could actually see we could see a much lower 10 to 1 ratio. It, it could get to 5 to 1. And, and you know, it might get to, we might see the same price because there's so little silver out there. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I do believe the best options, the best thing to own going forward are physical gold and silver. It, even though it's not a guarantee, uh, you know, collapse of the system, I know it's good to have bulk food, uh, defense, you know, uh, some uh, weapons, bullets, beans, that's the, that's the, that's the go-to thing, to have a store of some food, and defense weapons, but if you ha if you have those things already, it is important to have physical gold and silver because they will provide you options in the future that your worthless 401k would not. So that's how I see it. All right. Well, before we let you go, I was just wanting to touch on one last subject. You recently reported on your website about how the Swiss actually exported a record amount of gold to the United States. Did you want to explain the significance of this? Yeah, Elijah, this was very interesting. I've been checking the USGS data, and some people say, well, that you can't believe the, US, the USGS or this, this information, it's all manipulated. I don't think it all, it's all manipulated. Uh, I think we may have missed some figures here. Some things might be secret, but I, I've been looking at the data, and in May, almost 21 tons of gold, and most of it was bullion, was shipped from Switzerland to the United States. Now, if we go back to the beginning of 2015, every month, the, the average was a fourth of a ton. So this is a 50 times increase of the average. And some months it was zero. I think there were uh, half a dozen months uh, from since the beginning of 2015 where Switzerland didn't export any gold to us. We've been exporting gold to Switzerland. And what was interesting like in 2013, we exported 284 tons to Switzerland. I mean, that was that was a little less than half of the total exports. Matter of fact, that year, 217 tons went to Hong Kong. So why why now are we did did Switzerland export that much gold in one month? Then in all the years, gosh, if we go back to 2000, you know, the average is like about two and a half tons per year. So something's changed. This happened in May. This happened before the British uh, vote to leave the European Union. I did receive one email. Someone said, well, it's because of the assets held in banks in Europe now are, are subject to maybe negative interest. Uh, so they're shipping some of this gold now to the United States. That might be part of it. That, that's, that's a plausible explanation. Or we could be seeing more Americans uh, buying uh, gold. And it's being now shipped. And here's one interesting data point. In June, we imported 50 tons of gold. I mean, uh, last month it was half. It's been, most of our imports uh, have been like 300 tons or less. We, we're importing, we're not importing as much gold. We've been exporting a lot of gold. So to see our imports now are starting to increase and our exports are starting to decrease. It seems as if more and more gold is staying in the United States, 
And I think that this 2016 has changed. Uh, and I think we're going to see more of that in the, in the latter part of the year. And I heard from another source that we, we, ex- we imported another 20 tons of gold from Switzerland in June. Uh, that's from, it's called LaurieOnGold.com. He emailed me and, and uh, stated that another 20 tons were exported from Switzerland to the United States. So this is, it seems like I have to wait to see the USGS data to confirm it, but it looks like this is an ongoing trend. It's starting to change now where gold has been going from West to East. Now Americans are waking up and now it starts some of it, not saying a lot of it, but some of it is starting to go from, I know uh, Switzerland is still West, but something is flowing back into the United States. And I think this trend will continue. All right. Well, Steve St. Angela, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you online? Okay, Elijah, thanks for talking with you, and I hope we get a chance to chat again. Uh, If any of your listeners or followers would like to check out the work, we at the SRS Rocco, that's S-R-S-R-O-C-C-O report.com, I put out two to three articles a week on the fundamentals of energy precious metals, the mining industry, and how this all impacts the overall economy. And we will be doing a precious metal webinar on August 2nd. And if anybody would like to attend, uh, they're more than welcome to. And it, there will be a recording afterwards, too. But, uh, yeah, we'd be more, than, it'd be more than happy to have some uh, folks stop on by because I do believe the information that we try to put out, uh, we, we try to sh- show the changing fundamentals and the trends because – even though the fundamentals might not aren't seem to be working or matter right now because of the manipulation, the, the, the trends that I see changing are showing that the situation is getting worse and worse and worse. So we, we want to continue to show this information so people can see what's happening and how things are changing. Once again, thank you so much for your time, Steve St. Angelo, and it would be great to have you on again sometime. All right, Elijah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. This video was brought to you in part by ReluctantPreppers.com. Alert! America is importing gold from Switzerland for the first time in decades. Rob Kirby of KirbyAnalytics.com joins Reluctant Preppers to sound the alarm. Jim Sinclair just blew the whistle that the amount of gold imported into the U.S. in May of 2016 mirrors almost to the ounce the gold demand for physical delivery on the COMEX. Shocking coincidence? or inconvenient fact exposing that the gold shelves are bare. Kirby drills in deeper to bring us to the conclusion that we are close to a catastrophic economic collapse and gives the evidence he sees as a clear writing on the wall. This interview is not to be missed. Seneca Cliff. Thus, energy production, economic activity, and GDP will all collapse together. End quote. Now, I guess, did you want to discuss a little bit about this first? Yeah, and I think this is important because my now, I I like the precious metals. I think they are a store of wealth, even though right now the majority of wealth, supposed wealth, is in paper assets. Uh, They aren't, that's not wealth. That's claims on future economic activity. So you have to have growing future economic activity to pay back everything. And I don't think we're going to have, we're not going to have that. Uh, It's not that I don't think we're not going to have that. So what is a real store of wealth is bought and paid for gold and silver. So the thing is, the Seneca Cliff comes from uh, an ancient Roman philosopher. His name was Lucius Seneca. And he he had, uh, had a lot of different famous sayings, but one of them was, increases are of sluggish growth, but the way to ruin is rapid. And basically, if we chart that, if we put that on a chart, it's like you see growth starting slow, uh, and then it moves up about 40. So the oil that we were producing in the early 1900s up until the 70s and 80s was very high energy return on invested. What that means is, for every barrel of energy cost to produce oil, in 1970, we were getting 30 barrels. 
those we had, thus we had 29 profitable barrels of oil in 1970. The U.S. economy did, and you could use those to build infrastructure, uh, roads, highways uh, for entertainment, for healthcare, for uh, school, for travel, for agriculture. Every barrel was used in, in that profitable barrel was used to maintain, grow, and have a uh, growing economy. Well, shale oil today has an energy return on invested of five to one. So even though we're producing a lot of it, it's a sixth of what we were doing in the 1970s. So now we only have four profitable barrels. The problem is you can't run the same system with all this infrastructure we have to maintain and all these obligations, social security. So how do you continue running it? You, you add debt to five degrees and then it gets to the top and it doesn't come down 45 degrees, like let's say a bell curve. It comes down very quickly. It's like a cliff. And so this is from my research on energy, on the, what is known as the energy return on invested, we are going to experience a, a collapse. And this is above and beyond. People talk about EMP attacks, nuclear attacks, or the collapse of the dollar, or or breakdown of the banking system. If, if we don't have any of those, we're still going to have this Seneca-like collapse because of the energy. And so, we've been living off of cheap energy up until recently. And what that is, and that, let me just quickly explain, it's the energy return on invested. Some people do not believe in the peak oil theory, and they believe, well, now that we've, we've brought on the shale oil, and it's, we've almost doubled U.S. oil production in the last 10 years, which is phenomenal. But it, it's, it was oil we really couldn't afford without zero interest rates and QE printing, money, money printing. This video was brought to you in part by SD Bullion. While some online bullion dealers continue to charge $4 over spot for U.S. Mint Silver Eagles, SD Bullion is selling 2016 Silver Eagles for just $2.29 over spot for any quantity. Again, that's just $2.29 over spot for any quantity. If you haven't joined over 25,000 new customers by making the switch to SD Bullion, what are you waiting for? You could save hundreds or even thousands of dollars on your next order. SD Bullion, the lowest prices, period. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceAndLiberty.com and with us today, a new guest, Steve St. Angelo from the SRS Rocco Report. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Elijah, there's a lot of things happening in the markets recently. I think we're going to see some uh, volatile uh, things happening and uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you. Definitely. And I'd like to start out with something you wrote to me. You said that I believe we are going to experience what is known as this. And all this debt now, Elijah, we have in the system is, is, is devouring us. It, there's too much debt. So if you don't have the, the high energy return on invested, the high quality oil, if you don't have that to run the system, you put debt into the system. And so this is the issue that uh, I think most analysts missed, even the precious metal analysts, because I don't think we're going to see, as Jim Sinclair or Jim Rickards, we're going to back the dollar or the gold by all the dollars out there, by all the uh, treasury debt out there. It, it, it won't matter. Gold and silver prices will explode because of this falling energy situation. And so I wanted to start the interview on that. Definitely. And I'd like to get back to uh, precious metals a little later. But first, I'd like to discuss more about energy. You've talked about how the whole financial system is basically in dire shape because of all this subpriming that's going on, kind of like what was happening in 2008. But in this case, it's not just the housing industry, it's the auto industry, it's bonds, and it's also energy. So did you want furniture and so th people were going out to dinner and we were using also the our houses as um, as ATMs. So that was one one of the subprime. That was it. It was the housing. Well, now we have four or five, if you want to include the uh, student debt. We have auto. You can, you can now lease or b buy a car for nothing or little down for 84 months. I mean, when I was younger, it was two, three, or four years 
48 months. And if he, if he had to do five years, 60 months, you were considered a loser. So now it's, it's almost normal to have an 84 month car loan. And, and if we look at the, the government bonds, the government bonds have doubled at our negative rates. They, they're 13 trillion now out there out that are negative rates. And that's doubled since the last six months. Well, these are basically, these are junk bonds, really, if you think about it, because most of the governments are, de- are in debt. So it's almost like these 13 trillion negative rate bonds out there are junk bonds. But the, so this is the third leg of the subprime U.S. market. The fourth one is what I believe, Elijah, is the most important, is the subprime energy industry. We peaked in cheap oil production. The United States did. Let's just forget everybody else. But they are, have, they are peaking in cheap oil production. We peaked in 1970, and it to continue to decline to 2005. Well, then, with zero interest, posed wealth is in paper assets. Uh, they are, that's not wealth. That's claims on future economic activity. So you have to have growing future economic activity to pay back everything. And I don't think we're going to have, we're not going to have that. Uh, It's not that I don't think we're not going to have that. So what is a real store of wealth is bought and paid for gold and silver. So the thing is, the Seneca cliff comes from uh, an ancient Roman philosopher. His name was Lucius Seneca. And he, he had, uh, had a lot of different famous sayings, but one of them was increases are of sluggish growth but the way to ruin is rapid. And basically, if we chart that, if we put that on a chart, it's like you see growth starting slow, uh, and then it moves up about 45 degrees, and then it gets to the top, and it doesn't come down 45 degrees. Like, let's say a bell curve. It comes down very quickly. It's like a cliff. And so this is, from my research on energy, on the what is known as the energy returned on invested, we are going to experience a, a collapse. And this is above and beyond. People talk about EMP attacks, nuclear attacks, or the collapse of the dollar, or a or breakdown of the banking system. If, if we don't have any of those, we're still going to have this Seneca-like collapse because of the energy. And so we've been living off of... This video was brought to you in part by SD Bullion. While some online bullion dealers continue to charge $4 over spot for U.S. Mint Silver Eagles, SD Bullion is selling 2016 Silver Eagles for just $2.29 over spot for any quantity. Again, that's just $2.29 over spot for any quantity. If you haven't joined over 25,000 new customers by making the switch to SD Bullion, what are you waiting for? You could save hundreds or even thousands of dollars on your next order. SD Bullion, the lowest prices, period. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceAndLiberty.com and with us today, a new guest, Steve St. Angelo from the SRS Rocco Report. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Elijah, there's a lot of things happening in the markets recently. I think we're going to see some uh, volatile uh, things happening and uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you. Definitely. And I'd like to start out with something you wrote to me. You said that I believe we are going to experience what is known as the Seneca cliff. Thus, energy production, economic activity, and GDP will all collapse together. End quote. Now, I guess, did you want to discuss a little bit about this first? Yeah, and I think this is important because my now I, I like the precious metals. I think they are a store of wealth, even though right now the majority of wealth is supp- cheap energy up until recently. And what that is, and that let me just qu- quickly explain, it's the energy return on invested. Some people do not believe in the peak oil theory, and they believe, well, now that we've, we've brought on the shale oil, and it's, we've almost doubled U.S. oil production in the last 10 years, which is phenomenal. But it, it's, it was oil we really couldn't afford without zero interest rates and QE printing, money, money printing. So the oil that we were producing in the early 1900s up until the 70s and 80s was very high energy return on invested. What that means is for every barrel of energy cost to produce oil, in 1970, we were getting 30 barrels. 
Those, we had, thus, we had 29 profitable barrels of oil in 1970, the U.S. economy did. And you could use those to build infrastructure, uh, roads, highways, uh, for entertainment, for health care, for uh, school, for travel, for agriculture. Every barrel was used in, in that profitable barrel was used to maintain, grow, and have a uh, growing economy. Well, shale oil today has an energy return on invested of five to one. So even though we're producing a lot of it, it's a sixth of what we were doing in the 1970s. So now we only have four profitable barrels. The problem is you can't run the same system with all this infrastructure we have to maintain and all these obligations, social security. So how do you continue running it? You, you add debt. And all this debt now, Elijah, we have in the system is, is, is devouring us. It, there's too much debt. So if you don't have the, the high energy return on invested, the high quality oil, if you don't have that to run the system, you put debt into the system. And so this is the issue that uh, I think most analysts miss, even the precious metal analysts, because I don't think we're going to see, as Jim Sinclair or Jim Rickards, we're going to back the dollar or the gold by all the dollars out there, by all the uh, treasury debt out there. It, it, it won't matter. Gold and silver prices will explode because of this falling energy situation. And so I wanted to start the interview on that. Definitely. And I'd like to get back to uh, precious metals a little later. But first, I'd like to discuss more about energy. You've talked about how the whole financial system is basically in dire shape because of all this subpriming that's going on kind of like what was happening in 2008. But in this case, it's not just the housing industry, it's the auto industry, it's bonds, and it's also energy. So did you want to talk about this? Yeah, correct. In, in 2007, we had the housing bubble, and that was the mortgage, uh, subprime mortgage. And everything was, was uh, built upon that. We had auto sales, and we had people making more, uh, let's say, 